Hey, Shmoopies, and welcome back to Insects Appeal. Today, we're going to be talking about centipedes. So, if they absolutely terrify you, you might want to get out now, and I'll definitely understand. But first, I just want to thank you guys for subscribing and sticking around. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like the content you see on my channel, it would really help me out. We recently hit 100 subscribers at Insects Appeal, and I know that's not a huge milestone on YouTube, but I'm proud of it, and I thank you all sincerely for that. I've been pretty busy this past month, I've finally entered my pupil stage, and there's been a lot of awesome new things happening in my life, so I haven't had a lot of time for videos lately, but that'll get better. So anyway, thanks again for subbing and tuning in for our 100 subscriber special on Insects Appeal. Do centipedes really have 100 legs? So love them or hate them, we all pretty much know that centipedes have 100 legs. I mean, centipede is Latin for 100 feet after all. But who can say they've ever stopped and counted? Do they all really have 100 legs? And, well, why do they have so many legs anyway? Well, let's explore. Centipedes belong to an ancient class of arthropod called Chilopoda, in the subphylum Myriapoda which also contains the classes Diplopoda, Parapoda, and Symphyla. The current oldest known terrestrial animal fossil as of writing is actually a myriapod, the extinct millipede Pneumodesmus pneumani from the late Silurian. It is believed that centipedes were the first myriapods to diverge from their last common ancestor around 430 million years ago, therefore making them one of the first types of animals to fill a predatory niche in a terrestrial environment. Centipedes are extremely abundant and diverse around the world, with Chilopoda having five orders containing around 3,000 described species, though thousands more likely exist in the world. So we know this bizarre body plan has been successful for longer than any other land predator can claim, but how did that happen and why all the legs? As with all arthropods, centipedes are true metameric animals, that is, the body is comprised of different metameres or somites, that all take a similar form but specialize for different bodily functions. The original driving evolutionary force for metamerism appears to have been locomotion, as can be seen in a primitive form in annelid worms. The centipedes seem to have gotten kind of obsessed with the idea and decided if they're going to have all those fancy metamers, they might as well get to walk in too, evolving a pair of legs for every thoracic metamere. And here is where we get to our answer. Since metamers derive from a basic form and specialize, evolution in metameric arthropods occurs rapidly, which allow different centipede forms to diversify quickly. Centipedes split into two main modes of development, and these ultimately dictate just how many metameres and legs a centipede will have at any given life stage. Anamorphic centipedes develop more leg-bearing body segments as they molt from instar to instar, which always occurs in additions of two segments at a time, after an initial single segment following the first molt. For example, everybody's favorite, the house centipede, hatch with only four pairs of legs, then molt to have five, subsequently adding two pairs of leg segments per molt to reach a maximum of 15 pairs of legs as an adult. This anamorphism is the original mode of centipede growth and development, and is still exhibited by three of the five extant orders of centipede. But with that being said, the anamorphic orders of centipede seem to be limited to 15 pairs of legs, which obviously does not add up to 100 legs. But there are also the epimorphic centipedes of the order Scolopendromorpha and Geophilomorpha, who, like other arthropods that undergo incomplete metamorphosis, have the same number of body segments throughout their life cycle. These centipedes develop all of their legs in the embryonic stage of life, and never grow new leg-bearing segments between molts. Like the anamorphic centipedes, during development our epimorphic centipedes add leg segments in pairs following an initial single addition, 
and so no centipede beyond the embryo stage will ever have an even number of leg pairs. Think of it as the anamorphic mode of development happening all before the centipede is even born. Epimorphic centipedes vary throughout the world from having 15 to 191 pairs of legs. So now we see that some of the longest centipedes in the world may have up to 382 total legs, as with some geophilomorphs, but no centipede will ever actually have 100 legs, since they will never have an even number of body segments. And so there it is. Simply put, no, centipedes literally are incapable of ever having exactly 100 legs, since all centipedes have an odd number of leg-bearing segments. The actual number of legs on any adult centipede varies from species to species, from as few as 30 to as many as 382. But never ever will they have 100. So what do we do with this information? Psh, I don't know. Rename centipedes? Who cares? But I do hope you found this as interesting as I did, and I'll definitely have more interesting videos about myriapods in the future. And with that, I want to thank you for watching. And if you think I deserve it, please like and subscribe. And thanks again for 100 subs, YouTube. I'm looking forward to hitting that 1,000 milestone one day soon. I'll be trying to have more frequent uploads in coming weeks, so stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one.